Hey friend, we just arrived here in Antioch of Syria. So we had talked about where we originally were in Istanbul, the seven churches. They've made our way all the way over to Tarsus. And then now, from Tarsus all the way along over down into here to Antioch and Syria. And if you realize, this is the Syrian border right here. So it just gives you an idea where we are in Turkey. So we're nestled all the way down here along the Mediterranean um, at Antioch of Syria. Now, there's not much here that deals with the time of Paul. Um, but we do have a couple things that we're able to look at. But behind me, you can see the city, the modern day city. This city would have been a population of about 750,000. It would have been the third largest city in the Roman Empire. Um, Rome was bigger, Alexandria and Egypt was bigger, but this became the hub of this really early church. If you remember in Matthew chapter 24 when Christ was talking, he was saying that when persecution comes into Israel, into Jerusalem, that they should flee to the mountains. And these early Christians did that. Some went over into Jordan. A lot of them ended up here in Antioch of Syria. We're going to be at a place that is called St. Peter's Church. It's a little after the time of, of the Apostle Paul, but supposedly in this church is some cave structures where this early church met. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of footage of that for you um, here in Antioch of Syria. What's amazing about this place um, is inside of there is just a cave structure, but most likely, from what they can tell, is it was tying early Christianity to a place where they were meeting. Either it was a tomb structure or a place where a church was gathering. Um, they call it St. Peter's Church because Peter is in this area as well. And I find that interesting because the story with that early church is the discussions between Peter and Paul on what's the admission standards or what do you have to do to become a Gentile believer in Christ. You know, with circumcision, you have to obey kosher laws, and that discussion was happening. You know, from here, Paul goes down to Jerusalem, to the Jerusalem Council, to discuss those very issues. And it talks about an Acts as when they received that letter from the Jerusalem Council, their heart was filled with joy because they realized that Gentiles could become believers in Christ. And this area is where they're first called Christians, and this is the the main hub that then explodes across the Roman Empire and changes the world. And it's exciting to be able to stand here. Not a lot of groups or, or tourism gets into this area just because of where it is along the Syrian border. But I think this is a grave structure. You can see the, um, the holes in the wall. That's very, very similar to a lot of the graves um, you see in Israel. A lot of that ancient Roman period of where they would just get a, a hole in, in rock and place ossuaries in there, um, in a place of burial. And it probably ties to where this was an early Christian burial site, maybe with a gathering place for modern believers in these caves. So you can see how the city would have been spread out down below here in the valley. And then up behind me, you can see the mountain, and that would have been the necropolis. That's the place where there have been temples and the religious section um, overlooking the city. Typically, all the temples are up there. But this city would have been massive as it is today in the Roman Empire at this time. It is the place of trade and commerce that's happening between Asia and to the south with, with Levant, with Israel and Egypt. So this is a central location, a lot of fluid people groups coming through here. It actually helped these early Christians to, to blend in, to hide among the larger people groups. And because it was a transient society, the laws weren't as strict for it. And this enabled this early Christian movement to blossom and to explode. 